from Interfaith Alliance, this is State of Belief Radio. I'm your host, Reverend Welton Gaddy. A 16-year-old boy in Memphis, Tennessee, comes out to his parents as gay. He's quickly whisked away to a conservative Christian reparative therapy center called Love in Action. Now, what happened next was so unusual, so inspiring, that we're fortunate that filmmaker Morgan John Fox spent the next five years creating a documentary film about it. The film is titled, This is What Love in Action Looks Like. And it's just come out on a DVD from TLA Releasing, And we are fortunate as well to have Morgan John Fox join us now on State of Belief Radio. Morgan, welcome. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Can you start with what brought this gay Memphis teen, Zach Stark, to your attention? This was 2005, I believe. What what was your awareness of the ex-gay movement up at that point? Well, my awareness actually was very little. I, I didn't know anything about it. I mean, little did I know that one of the oldest and largest ex-gay organizations in the entire world was just in my backyard. Um, how I found out about it was uh, Zach Stark, he was 16 at the time, he was actually going to the same high school that I had graduated from several years previous. And um, I do a lot of work in Memphis with film and theater, and so I knew a lot of his friends um, uh, that still were at that school. And, you know, I got a call one day about this kid who was being sent to this camp and it seemed almost fictional, you know, it's like this movie, but I'm a cheerleader or something where there, it seems like a comedy or something unbelievable, but it's so true and, it, and it's, and it's happening right, you know, in our backyard. And so we started to research and get information about this place and when Zach was going to be going there. And we found out that it was just like two days away that he was going to start. Hmm. Um, and, and so we decided to have a protest. Um, and I helped, essentially wanted to help his friends who were all teenagers as well, help them organize um, and, and you know, see through the support of a friend of theirs. Mm-hmm. So you had to make a decision rather quickly that, oh, yeah. on what you were going to do about making this movie. Yeah, see, you know, to me, what was first was was helping Zach's friends and just the local community stand up for a situation we knew was wrong. Um, And I, you know, I'm a filmmaker. I'd already made three feature-length films before this time, Um, not documentaries, but films I've written direct, but Mm -hmm. I own my own equipment. And so that first day of the protest, I brought my equipment, and I kind of balanced talking to the media and helping, you know, draw signs for the protest as well as filming things and documenting at the same time. What was the uh, what was the tipping point? Did I mean did you say fairly quickly uh, for some reason I've got to I've got to take this on? Well, I was just filming the first day and really we, that's what we probably thought that, that that's all it was going to be was a one day protest, but it went so well there was such a great turnout and the media was was really portraying it in such a positive light that we decided to do it every single day that Zach had to be there. And by about day three, this had become a huge viral news story. We're getting emails from the New York Times, Time Magazine, Good Morning America, CNN. And so suddenly I realized that I had the inside story to what is now, you know, a huge international news story. And, and, you know, it's all very fortunate, uh, you know, in terms of being a filmmaker and and the story falling in my lap. Um, But also at that point it felt like a duty for me Uh to – put a time capsule over something that felt really special. Um, and, you know, I, I felt fortunate to be in that position, surely. My guest is Morgan John Fox, director of This Is What Love in Action Looks Like, about one teenager's experience in the world of conservative Christian ex-gay reparative therapy. Morgan, my uh, hometown is just north of you. I grew up in Paris in West Tennessee. Oh, wow. And I and yeah. so I know that you were not receiving loads of encouragement from the local community uh, to do this kind of thing. What gave you support? Well, you know, we were actually quite surprised. Surely there was um, a, a section of of Memphis or the local community right around where Love and Action was that that wasn't supportive. But you know, we actually were really surprised and encouraged by the local media 
um, how well they supported, and also just the turnouts that we were having for these daily protests. You know, if you see the documentary, you'll see some of the news organizations, specifically some of the more conservative ones, say the gay community was outraged and they came to protest. But honestly, some of these days it was like 80, 80, 85 percent straight people. I mean, a lot of the teenagers especially were, 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 you know, heterosexual kids coming out to support a gay friend of theirs, you know, and that's the real sign of the times and how things are changed. I think a lot of that has to do with social media and how well we were able to spread that story to people um, who wanted to show support, you know, and I think this is a story about a kid being shamed and people were just like, you know, this is a friend of ours. We don't appreciate him being bullied or forced into a situation that's unhealthy for him, and we're going to show support. So we were we felt very encouraged, um, even though there may have been some discouragement around. We blocked that out. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you've got to also uh, know, I guess, that it was Zach's courage in posting his thoughts publicly that made this amazing story possible. Isn't that true? Absolutely. I think, you know— it's it's something like it, what I kind of call as a modern day message in a bottle. You know, ten years ago, Zach would have written these uh, entries in a in a journal and put them under his bed, and no one would have ever seen them. But him being able to speak up and put this on his MySpace blog, which at the time was the you know Facebook of that day, and and you know, yes, he wrote so eloquently what he was going through, what he was feeling, what kind of situation he was in, and he had the foresight to post the rules of love and action and and what he was about to face, and that gave Mm -hmm. people tools and and support and courage to stand up for him because he had the courage to do it in the first place. How did the process of making the documentary go? Well, so Zach was ended up being in there for eight weeks, and so I, I of course, documented the protest as it was happening. Um, but then, and then I knew that I was going to have to wait until Zach turned 18 to be able to get permission to mm-hmm. interview him. So I always knew that it was going to at least be a couple of years before I would finish it. But even after that happened, I still felt like it didn't necessarily have an ending to my documentary. Love in Action was still there. Um, you know, they were still doing what they were doing, but then... As time went by, I made another film that I wrote and directed. It was called OMG Ha Ha Ha. It was a, a feature-length film, and and you know, kind of just leaving the film on the background of the documentary. And then at some point, other things started to happen. Refuge, the teenage program of Love and Action, uh, was discontinued. And then suddenly, John Smith, the acting director of Love and Action, uh, stepped down. Um, and then we start to hear, you know, more things in the news that are happening. And suddenly after, you know, three years of trying to get John Smith's interview and other people's interviews, John Smith leaves Love in Action, decides he would give me an interview. And that was the beginning to what I felt like was leading to a sort of a resolution for the film. Hmm. Um, and w- what that kind of led to is John Smith had a real change in heart over time. And so I continued to interview him and document that as he began to say different things about uh, Love in Action and, and ex organizations and how he felt like no one had actually ever changed. Um, and, you know, he was suddenly speaking out against an organization that he was the head of for, you know, mm. almost 20 years. And so I began to, you know, uh, continue to interview him and document other things as they happened. And so I'm really actually glad that I didn't try to finish yeah. the film after two years um, because, so many other things happened that naturally gave me a resolution and, and I think made it a better piece altogether. You you could not have dared write the script for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. It's, it's definitely fascinating. You know, there's so many stories in the documentary that are so important, um, valuable, and and the fact that John Smith, who was once the enemy of the protest and and certainly an enemy of mine, the fact that he came around so much and, and now is... Uh, you know, in some ways, just saying the same message that we were outside yeah. the doors, protesting against it, it's, it's pretty wild, uh, for sure. Can you tell us how Zach is doing today? Yeah, Zach is doing good. You know, he lives in East Tennessee. He's going to school. He wants a job. He he has his own life. You know, he gets to make his own decisions. And, uh, you know, I don't know specifically with him and his family. That's something that's very personal for him, and, and that's a journey that he has to go on, like so many people but in terms of just his own uh, healthiness and happiness, I think it's intact, and he's he's feeling well. And um, you know, 
I think there's some some of the documentary doesn't go into a lot of his personal life, but that's because Zach is a very personal person. You know, he was put into the situation uh, where people acted, and and he kind of became a poster boy. You know, whether he wanted to or not, um, and Zach isn't the type of person that would probably naturally do that or, or offer to be that. But but I think he's also grateful. Um, and glad that it happened the way it did just because uh, he knows that it can affect other people and that his story can inspire others to act and uh, hopefully give others hope who may be in situations like he was in. Isolation is one of the most powerful and most dangerous elements in, in this kind of faith-based therapy. That's why California's legislature is working right now to outlaw this kind of misguided treatment for those under 18. But well, what happened after Zach was sent to love in action is the farthest thing in the world from isolation. In fact, uh, it's kind of breathtaking, don't you think? Yeah, you know, I, I really wonder what would have happened had the community not responded the way they did when Zach went to love in action. It's There's no way to tell, you yeah. know. Um, I'm certain that it, the community response and all of his friends picking up for him um, altered the course of his stay at Love and Action. Um, certainly they were, you know, changed their programming and, and their tactics because they were very concerned of how, how this would end up. And so I think that if, if people can take something away from this documentary, there's a few things, but one of the most important things is when you see someone in need or you see something that you think is, is not right. And specifically when a, you know, a teenager like this or a friend of yours is being put in a situation that compromises their health and their well being that it really is important to stand up. You know, I think it's easy to feel like we're powerless or something we do can't make a difference, but this is this is a great case that shows that it can. It can make a huge difference. It mm-hmm. can have a huge impact, and it's so important not to remain silent in situations like this. Morgan, what did telling this story do to you? Whew, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's another <laughs> one of those things. Had I not told the story, had I not stuck through it, what would my life be like? It's hard to tell. But certainly I'm so grateful that I have. I mean, it's, you know, I'm a gay person living in the South, and there's always kind of an undoing of the homophobia that we've learned earlier in our lives and that kind of thing. I feel like filmmaking in general has always been my vessel towards uh, healing and and feeling more, uh, I don't know, happy in general and whole. So this in particular has been one of the most rewarding films I've ever made. Going all around the country, we've shown it over 40 cities now, and and having feedback sessions and question and answer sessions where people are telling their stories and I'm sharing my stories and it just it's been so rewarding and it's been just you know it's it's further allowed me to feel like I'm on the right path in terms of making the films and telling the stories that I'm telling and and seeing that there's an impact to be made uh it feels important and I hope that you know this film certainly will reach reach people and help other people as well This is what Love in Action looks like, is a beautiful film in every sense of the word, and in a more personal and powerful way than it would be by just exposing the truth about ex-gay programs. This documentary confronts those who desperately cling to the belief that homosexuality is an addiction with relatable people who have suffered for having been brought into that belief. This is what Love in Action looks like. It is available now on DVD from TLA Releasing. I've been talking to the film's director, Morgan John Fox, with the current legislative initiative intended to protect young people in California from this kind of dangerous pseudoscience. Uh, This DVD release could not have come at a better time. Morgan, I thank you for the documentary. I thank you for the sensitivity that brought you to the decision uh, to make this documentary. And I thank you uh, so much for being with us today on State of Belief Radio. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to help spread the word.